Ah, good job. <laughs> later then you come in, okay? It's not your turn yet. Later your turn to shine, okay? Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. I'm Naomi Nyo. I started content creation at the age of 11 and I'm 25 this year, so that makes it more than a decade. Hopefully in today's video, you get to see a different side of me that you never knew about. Okay, so actually, I am adopted, which technically means I'm not Naomi Neo, right? <laughs> yup, the truth is out! My family is really huge, so my father's side and my mom's side is usually very crowded over like um, festive seasons. I'm actually very close to my um, father's side, so the new family, right? I'm especially close to my cousins um, who grew up with me. She always l likes to come to my place because to play with this cousins. I used to hang out with her two older sisters more when we were younger and she was like this little sister, this little they just annoying her along. sister. Yeah, just like, tag along. <laughs> yeah, 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 she was like always following me. <laughs> We've always been very tight. I guess that's kind of like the way our family runs. We've always believed in um, the family bond, I would say. Your mom very proud of you. Don't cry, ah. <laughs> We go, uh, we travel together a lot. We um, make time for each other. I think the first time I really, really suspected it was when we had a health checkup in school. My friends and everyone, we were gathered together and everyone was talking, hey, you know, what's your blood type? You know, I don't know, for some reason we thought it was cool to share about it. But I was the only one who didn't know and why I didn't know was because it wasn't in my health booklet. But when I asked my parents, they were uncertain about it. That was number one. And number two was, Obviously, my um, ID gave it away. Um, so on my ID, I'm not from Singapore. I'm actually born in China. So that was the biggest giveaway. Whenever I bring this topic up, their answers will always differ. <laughs> like one moment, my mom would be like, "Oh, because uh, dad had to go there for work," and then a few years later, it would be like, "Oh, because your grandparents were there on a holiday." Why she suspected it was because uh, she told me she realised that she doesn't have any baby or infant photos of herself. Her parents only had pictures of her when she was three, three years old, four years old. Yeah, so she kept asking me, yeah, where's her few months old, where's her one month old picture. My mum would say, oh, we left it at the old house. So we shifted a couple of times and then she said that, oh, we left it there, uh, we didn't take it with us. And I kind of just brush it off, but after having my own kids, I was like, it's not right because, you know, baby photos is something that every mom would keep very close to them. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> the suspicion went on and what led to me asking them again after so many years was when I was pregnant with Kai um, during my first pregnancy. She seemed very unaware of how a pregnancy should go. So things like a baby's cakes, she got very fascinated about it. Like, oh, oh, your baby actually cakes? So I was like, I thought every pregnant woman knows that. So she would say like, oh, grandma told me that as a when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to do this or eat this. It, all, it was always someone else's advice. Then I was like, why hasn't she given me any personal advice, right? So it started to get to me even more and that was when I finally decided that I want to ask this question again after so many years. Because you're not my mother. Idiot. <laughs> So I remember there was one day where I think I was in the car with Han, my husband, and this just got to me. I think it was because we had a checkup in the day, um, and I think we were talking about blood type and everything again. So during the night, I remember giving my dad a call and my mom a call separately, and both of their answers were different. And then I was like, at that moment, I knew like something was wrong. Uh. And I guess from there, they also knew that 
Oh no, I can't hide it any further. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. Are you nervous? <laughs> no. No? <Fine. laughs> I'll be prepared. <laughs> I'll be prepared to tell me things you've never told me before. Quick review. First question that's on top of my mind is um, why? Like, why do you all want to adopt me? Why me? And of course, the reason for your adoption. I think the biggest reason is both of us were trying to have a baby for a while. Um, <clears throat> ever since we got married, I think it was at least five, six years. Mm. Uh, eight years. Oh, eight years. Yes. Oh, you never told me that before. Medically, it was already certified by a doctor that both of us could not bear kids our home. Um, having seen our my other sibling go up there, uh, having got so many kids, we felt that we want to have you know one on our own, uh, so that we can basically take care, and bring you up to our best ability. My in-laws married for a few years, and they have no kids. It's good to have a child, even though it's not your own. Yeah, I think there was almost 30, 40 of them made a trip back yeah. to China so it's to like visit the hometown. Uh, grandmas, brothers and sisters. <coughs> so it was like for this or it was no, just it's, a it's, 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 it's a, a planned tour. family trip. Yeah, it was uh, a just tour and a trip. they decided to yeah. visit a the holiday. hometown. Somebody mentioned that uh, there's a little girl going for adoption. And they were like so curious yeah. and keen to yeah. see the girl. The parents brought the baby. And that it, it was you. That evening. Uh, it was quite cold and um, they say we were wrapped in you know, quite thick clothes because it was quite cold. Your dad was uh, a barber maybe? Yeah, hairdresser, a hairdresser and your mom was a teacher, teacher or something. So actually because they probably she had more than they were they had more than two. Because in China they only allow one yeah. child. So we said okay then maybe we should try. Uh, and then the, make contact with the relative in China. The process was a little bit lengthy as well. How long did it take for because me to come over? We, we, had to, we had to make application to the legal departments. We had to prove that medically we are not able to conceive. Mm. We got to prove that we are financially able to... Uh, have. to yeah. So this is a standard adoption procedure? Mm. Yeah, ah, yeah, okay. yeah. And there was even occasion where they had to do a house visit. Mm. Uh, Social to, living to, condition. To interview uh, yeah. us until they are finally satisfied. Mm. So the whole process took about three to four months. Mm. At one point, I heard from one of the cousins, you were quite sweet when at the airport. After the separation, she she brought you to buy some candies and you were so sweet. You told her you want to buy some for your mom. Mama, it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what she told me. Then I bought the candy first, she wasn't there anymore. <laughs> It was only the third or fourth day, I think it was. And I was carrying you throughout. And you kept looking out the door, expecting like someone like. I through. think at that time you were closer to that because it's you, like you're a, thinking a, of your uh, dad. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So you sat at the door, you kept looking out. Uh, maybe like in expectation, your parents might come back. The moment that she came out from airport, I looked at her. You know. As a mom myself, I find it's quite sad to see, you know, some child that is coming over to stay with an unknown family. I look at her, she was so cute and she was like not knowing what is happening. I mean, we felt very bad as well because we literally took someone's kid away from them. So we had a hard time accepting that fact as well. Because. Yeah. You're not my own. I have to you know, really take care of you. From from the first day, we have always treated you as our very own. Yeah. I forbid anyone that mentioned the word adopted. It was no. never in our mind that you, you know, are adopted. You, you were not our flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah I know. I take Naomi as my daughter also. Although I have four children, 
and always uh, I really doctored on her very much. So my in-laws, they were working. So every morning, they would just fetch Naomi over to the place. So um, I was very close to her because I'm the one who really, you know, take care, cook and feed her and shower her. You know, yeah. once like she, when she was still pregnant with Kaizo, you came over to stay over at her house, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then you yeah, went yeah, to like yeah. Tampanese to shop and stuff. Oh remember? my god, yeah, 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 yeah. She's really like a sister to me. Actually, I knew a while back because I overheard so I could like figure it out. When? A while back? Like when? Like when you were talking about it, so like, we overheard it. Oh. Yeah. Wait, was it the same time the rest knew? I know that they know. I think they all knew it like different. I, I actually wanted to hide this from you forever. Yeah, so... Because in my mind, I, I don't take you as a adopted child. You feel like there's no difference la, for you? And I'm so afraid that once I tell you, you will leave the house. Yeah, I know. And I, you will not come back I know, anymore. I know. <laughs> No la, I won't la. Why would I? That night when I when you hang out the phone, I was telling grandma, oh dear, she asked me for our blood type because the doctor wanted. Mom, how can? The doctor want our blood type for what? <laughs> so, um, I think it's time you should tell her. Already. So grandma that, was the... Yes, grandma did mention to me. I mean, we've, that, always, we've always had that discussion is when? when was the right time. Right. And we, we felt that when you were younger, like 15, 16, it wasn't right because your mindset might not be Mature right enough. to accept. Uh, and we thought at that time, since you're going to have your own family, since you have your baby, it's only right that you knew your birthright. You should hear from us rather than you hear from somebody else outside. So that is what we afraid that, you know, one day you heard from someone else instead of your own parents. My parents sat me down and they revealed the truth to me. You know, suspecting it for so many years since I was a little girl versus knowing it on that day was totally different. I remember feeling a little confused, a little lost, I would say. So at that point, it was like, oh, I don't have any family here with me. I'm not Naomi new. And then there were so many questions that started surfacing like, are they nice to me because of um, who I really am, like I'm adopted, I, I don't belong to the family. I think since young I've always felt special, but I thought it was just everybody loved me, I'm special, you know. Um, that's what they always tell me, right, that I'm different. So I thought it was just extra love from all my family members. There's no blood related family, that any family members that she know. But I think it's okay, I mean you have your parents, although you're adopted. But I mean I feel that adopted is even greater than yeah, raising your own kids. After all, it's not it's not your kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't deny that. <sighs> I'm always behind her. And have really a good life and a family that you built for yourself. Like I tried to make one for you. It wasn't a surprise. It was more like a affirmation. Yeah, sort of. I feel like it has answered a lot of her questions because I think along the whole journey of her life, she always had all these little um, suspicions or little questions like, hey, how come um, my mom or my parents are so strict with me? It's not easy to deal with as a person. So I felt like the shock part, I was more shocked at like, what, what is she going to do? She actually handled it quite maturely because she accepted it quite well. So yeah, I think it was more of me being there for her as a friend to like um, be her pillar of support if she needs. Telling her that actually nothing will change or nothing has changed. She knows how to prioritise her stuff properly. Like she wouldn't let this news uh, affect her whole life and what she has done for it. I did an interview some time ago um, and I was actually asked to reflect on my relationship with my parents over the years. I've always had a bit of resentment towards them. Um, I know it sounds ridiculous because they're my parents, right? We used to have a rough patch uh, throughout my teenage years. I feel like at the start, um, she obviously was like a teenager where, you know, she had her quarrels with her parents. It's something that every teenager would go through in life. Uh, but she has always told me, or, or rather I've always seen how she's made it a point to take care of her family. It's me? It's me, Anna. 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 
<laughs> I didn't understand why they were so strict with me. There were many things that I didn't understand. And I just felt like my parents just don't love me enough or my parents just don't understand me. Because I don't have any siblings, um, technically. And for many years, I've always felt alone. Problems know that you are not alone. And I felt like a lot of my teenage trauma came from not having enough love from my parents. Not that they didn't love me, but I felt like that wasn't the love that I needed or wanted. I tend to find myself going back to bad company. Okay, maybe not like bad company, but just people that don't really treat me really well or like treat me like shit. It was only until the interview that I did, I started thinking and I realised that you know, I shouldn't even have this feeling towards them, like this resentment because I wouldn't even be where I am or have this life I have right now without them. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Daddy, what you think? I huh? All the more because I'm not your biological daughter, I'm very thankful for the way you all took care of me. You brought me like <clears throat> to where I am now. I think I haven't really been showing that enough, like that gratitude. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> but right now, mom sees that you have a very happy family. Mom is already very, you know. But I'm always like... guilty, la. Like I just feel like I haven't been spending enough time with you all. Like it's always my family and work, family and work. And you all raised me to who I am today. You all never expected anything in return. And deep down, I know, like. Money doesn't buy happiness, so it's like no matter the gifts that I buy or whatever for you like what matters most is quality time, you know. I'm sorry I haven't been able to, you know, sell jing even. <laughs> I really hold my kids very closely to me because I feel like they are the only family that I have, blood related family. And um, they just mean a lot more to me than you know anyone else in the world. Uh. As for my parents, um, I don't think it ever changed uh, our relationship. If anything, it got better because I started understanding a lot of things that I didn't use to understand uh, from their perspective. Um, and just learning about the whole truth made me see things in a different light. I think for Asia, it's still, it's still tough la, to, to adopt a kid that's not yours. La. The way I feel about adoption is that I, I think that as long as your, your parents, be it biolog biological or not, they give you a good home and they raise you up as their own, I think that's more important than the fact whether you're adopted or not. I would if I cannot as in have a kid of my own, but it's not easy, la, so I guess that's the biggest factor.